Hello everyone, welcome to this episode of the Zoology Podcast. I'm going to tell you a story about the original penguins of the Arctic. The penguins which gave their name to the now more famous birds of Antarctica. These original penguins stood just under three foot tall. They had black and white feathers, looking like a black overcoat on a white shirt, while also having gammy little wings and large black webbed feet. They had a white spot near their eyes and white and black stripes on an oversized beak. If you saw one of these birds, it's easy to see how they look very much like what we know as a modern day penguin, except these birds were actually called great auks. And the story of how the great auks became extinct is a rather recent and sad tale. In June 1840, three sailors hailing from the Hebridean island of St Kilda landed on the rocky ridges of a nearby sea stack, Stack and Armin. This rock strutted proudly out the ocean, and at its tip rested a bird unlike any other that rested upon it. The men climbed up the rock and spotted this peculiar bird, a bird that stood head and shoulders above the others, above the puffins and the gulls that surrounded it. One sailor stated it was prophet-like. The great orc was no doubt very agile in the water, but their adaptions that allowed for such swift movement within the seas were not suited for moving on land and this made the flightless bird defenceless against these humans. What was driving these men, be it hunger or greed for the valuable meat and feathers of the great orc, it is unknown, but what is known is that these sailors abducted the bird from its rocky home. They tied its legs together and took it back to their ship and to their home. The bird was kept captive for three days, during which a terrible storm was brewing, trapping the men inside with the bird. As each day passed, the storm increased in its terribleness, and by the fourth day the sailors had grown fearful and superstitious. They placed the blame of such a storm on the great orc, condemning it as a maelstorm conjuring witch, the punishment of which was death, and so they proceeded to carry out such a punishment. This was the fate of the last great orc ever to be seen in the British Isles, yet four years later all great orcs would meet a similar fate and the species would meet their extinction under the foot of man. This fate was not surprising, however. It had been predicted as far back as 1785 by explorer George Cartwright. He wrote, A boat came in from Funk Island laden with birds, chiefly penguins, but it had been customary of late years for several crew of men to live in all summer on that island for the sole purpose of killing birds for the sake of their feathers the destruction of which they have made is incredible. If a stop is not soon put to that practice, the whole breed would be diminished to almost nothing. End quote. The great orc was once wildly distributed across the North Atlantic seas, being found on the waters except during the breeding season, which is when the bird inhabited just a few select islands, ranging from the Newfoundland in the west, Norway in the east, and Britain to the south. Prior to the 16th century, the species was so abundant that colonies consisted of hundreds of thousands packed the island shores during its month-long breeding season. The first major hit to their population numbers was during the Little Ice Age of the 16th to 19th centuries, when their breeding islands became accessible to polar bears. However, despite this predation, the species as a whole would still be quite robust. That was until the mid-16th century, when sailors from various European countries began to explore the seas, and in their need for fresh food sources they began harvesting the eggs of the nesting adults, and this placed many great orcs' populations in imminent danger of overharvesting. Helen James, a research zoologist at the Natural History Museum, said that overharvesting by people doomed the species to extinction. Living in the North Atlantic, where there were plenty of sailors and fishermen at sea over the centuries, and having the habit of breeding colonially on only a small few number of islands, was a lethal combination of traits for the great orc. End quote. The great orc required very specific nesting conditions that only a small number of islands could provide. The bird showed a preference for Funk Island off the coast of Newfoundland, Gofuglaska and Eldie Islands off the coast of Iceland, and St Kilda within the Hebridean archipelago, all of which provided a rough rocky terrain and a sloping shoreline which gave access to the seashore. A sailor wrote in 1718 that Funk Island was so populated by great orcs that a man could not go ashore upon these islands without boots, 
for otherwise they would spoil his legs. That they were entirely covered with these fowls, so close that a man could not put his foot between them. However, unfortunately, Funk Island also happened to be the favourite stop for sailors heading back from their transatlantic voyages. As adventures were coming to an end, most ships' provisions were dwindling also, and the men had worked up a great appetite for fresh meat. A rock, full of thousands of plump, delicious little birds, was therefore a tempting target, and so it was not surprising that these men would herd hundreds of these birds onto their boat. In 1534, French explorer Jacques Cartier wrote, in less than half an hour we filled two boats full of them, as if they had been stones, so that beside them which we did not eat fresh, every ship did powder and salt five or six barrels full of them. End quote. Likewise, in 1622, Captain Richard Whiteborn made a similar comment, stating that the sailors harvested the great orcs by the hundreds at a time as if God made the innocency of so poor a creature to become such an, an admirable instrument for the sustenation of man. End quote. This hunting of great orcs was not a new practice. Humans had been hunting them for around 6,000 years since the people first settled in Scandinavia. Great orcs' remains were also found in a 4,000 year old burial site in Newfoundland, which contained no less than 200 great orc beaks which were attached to ceremonial clothing, suggesting that they were important to the maritime archaic people of Newfoundland. The great orc was wanted for more than just its tasty meat. Its feathers, fats, oils and eggs were all particularly valuable. The down industry in particular helped propel the bird into extinction. After exhausting their supply of duck feathers in 1760 due to over-harvesting, feather companies looked for an alternative source, and this source was found on Funk Island, where the crews of sailors were sent to the great orc's nesting grounds every spring until 1810 by which time the last birds of the island were killed. This story does not place man in great light, but humanity is not all bad. People had recognised the plight of the original penguins, and conservation efforts were made in order to protect the bird's future. In 1775, the Nova Scotian government was moved by petition to ask the Parliament of Great Britain to ban the killing of great orcs. This petition was granted, and so anyone caught killing the orcs for feathers or taking their eggs was beaten in public. Now this punishment would discourage sailors from disturbing the birds. However, a loophole allowed fishermen to kill the great orcs if they intended to use their meat as bait. Perhaps this was not the wisest move, because despite there being penalties for killing great orcs, the bird's rarity made it a valuable commodity, with collectors willing to pay as much as 16 American dollars, the equivalent of a nearly a year's wage for a low school worker at the time for just a single specimen. It was ironically then that the rarity of the bird driving collectors to obtain specimens, and an unfortunate natural change within their environment, cemented the extinction of the original penguin. The last viable colony of great orcs lived on Gerfugluster, aka the Great Orc Rock, which was located near Iceland. This islet was a volcanic rock surrounded by cliffs, which made it inaccessible to humans and therefore a safer place to breed for the great orcs. However, in 1830, a volcanic eruption submerged the islet and the birds had to all relocate to the nearby island of Eldi, an island easily accessible to humans. This new colony was initially discovered in 1835 and totaled nearly 50 birds. The finding of this colony quickly reached the museums of the world and they sent out people to catch these penguins for their collection. The last pair of great orcs was found incubating the last hope of their species, one little egg. Unfortunately, on the 3rd of July, 1844, on request from a merchant, two men, John Branson and Sigurd Isleferson, strangled the last living adults to death, and another man, Ketil Ketilson, smashed their egg with his boot, unfortunately stamping out the species for good. And that's how the original penguin of the north went extinct. And while they were not a true penguin as we know it today, we can learn from their story of extinction and hopefully use these lessons to save future species which are highly valued yet are restricted to specific habitats to reproduce and survive.